just a complete game changer. Anybody who has, you know, on their roadmap moving to full automation, they really need to just take a quick detour uh, around to take a look at what these products have to offer. Welcome back to MTD CNC, my friends. I am in Austin, Texas today with my buddy Nathan. We're at Wolfram Manufacturing, and we're going to talk about what successes have been created in the partnership with Caring Engineering, and specifically in this moment, the T-Max system, which I find a lot of value in, except this is not just about the theory of utilizing something. This is the actual practice. And Nathan's partnership at Wolfram with Karen since 2011 and utilizing it since that point till today, this is really a great story for you guys. I'm so excited to share it with you. Nathan, thank you so much for being a part of MTD CNC. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad to be here. Well, I want to learn more about this. I've learned from Rob all the time. What a great human being he is. I know you have a fantastic partnership with him, but you have this technology, been utilizing it for 10, 11 years now. So mm -hmm. you have firsthand experience on how well it actually works. Can we learn more about that? Absolutely. Yeah, I'd be happy to talk about it. Okay. So if we take a look here, we, um, we're actually we're pulling together how we use this in our shop. So just a couple minutes ago, completely unstaged, really completely unstaged, um, we had a TMAC alarm on one of the machines. So I was in my office, I, I tend to keep the machines up running. Uh, I look up, there's an alarm. So I head out to the machine to take a look. And what I'll show you here is a little bit of um, just how we interact with the tools that we interact with um, and how TMAC is working for us. So the way you describe that as a machinist, coming from a machinist background, you're sitting in your office, you get the alarm. Normally back when I was running these machines, I'd be standing in front of the machine and I would get a similar alarm, but it wouldn't be mm -hmm. as educated. I think a great purpose to this is the ability for someone, an operator, an owner, to be able to run lights out production, have mm -hmm. one operator running multiple machines without having to go check on something else. It's really a team effort that is a big overview of the entire space. Is that kind of what's going on here? Absolutely, yeah. So the way we run, you know, with the Karen tools, we don't need to keep, uh, we call manufacturing specialist here, we don't need to keep manufacturing specialists in front of the machines. Uh, the machines are like an orderly third grade class. You know, they have a problem, they raise their hand, um, they say, I need attention. Um, and not just like red flashing light, it, we get some knowledge along with what's going on. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of a neat way to, uh, to work with things. We've got screens around the shop. Um, most people are also plugged in on their phones. So, you know, we happen to use Slack, if the machine has a problem, it reaches out and it pings us on Slack and it lets us know exactly what issue it's got. You know, you made a valuable point just now, um, multiple ones, but the one that stuck out to me based on my previous experience is the red light. Yeah, I would see red lights and I know something was wrong, but I wouldn't know what. You know, is, is something loose, is something broken? Is it just mm -hmm. a dull tool? So with that being said, and knowing that you get back information through the TMAX system and Karen Engineering, what all does it offer? When you look at this screen, what all information can you gather as a whole at any moment? Oh, it's it's pretty fantastic. So, you know, we have, we have kind of two different systems that we use together. So one is, um, is absolutely the TMAC information, and that it is recording um, and I, if it's a good time to pull this up, I'll go ahead and get it on in the background. No time like the present, my friend. <laughs> All right. So this one is a live view of the tool cutting. But what we get here is every single cut that we make uh, is recorded. Wow. So if something goes wrong with a tool, like it did uh, a few minutes ago, and we'll take a look at that in a bit here, um, I can go back to that tool and look at it, but more than that, I can go back to the part right before that, and I can overlay those two charts of just that cut to see what's different. Hmm. I can go back to when I put that tool into the machine and look at how it was cutting then, and then I could go back you know, one more from there and look at what was the last tool cutting that same part, what did it look like when it was cutting? So. 
your ability to kind of forensically analyze um, what's going on is amazing. It is like we are, you know, CSI Austin, uh, but it's around manufacturing and not murder. So it's it's a lot of fun. It sounds very intriguing for so many reasons. To put this in layman's terms for people like myself that are watching, ultimately, are we just reducing scrap rates and adding to more completed parts without having to work? It's reading simultaneously, as you mentioned, while it's machining, right? Absolutely. So you are reducing scrap rates. You are increasing uptime. You are increasing the number of parts that you drop out successfully of your process per day. I mean, it's, 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 it's good on all fronts. But one of the really powerful parts is once you stop, once it helps you stop chasing the, um, how am I going to keep this plate spinning, you know, if I'm one of those performance artists, once I stop that, I can start to use the data to improve my process. So then it just becomes layer and layer of improvement and more stability and more confidence in our production facilities, um, which after the last two years of everything going on, is just a wonderful thing. So It really, really feels multifaceted. Every time I ask you a question about a specific thing, you continue to peel back this onion of technology <laughs> for more information. We're talking about the uptime being you know, higher. We're talking about scrap rate being lower. You just mentioned the ability to have detailed information to make future processes better as mm -hmm. well. This seems like a really nice, all-inclusive piece of software that every machine should have, especially those trying to move to full automation. Absolutely. It really is. Um, just a complete game changer. Anybody who has, you know, on their roadmap moving to full automation, they really need to just take a quick detour uh, around to take a look at what these products have to offer. And before that, there is the much less expensive way, which is, you know, find a chair somewhere and watch your machine and don't let anybody go touch it for the length of time you're expecting that robot to go. <laughs> and if that works. If you can pass that test and nobody has to go and touch that machine, you might be ready. I would say give it a week and you're probably okay, maybe. But, you know, most processes don't pass that test. 100% right. Now, we've obviously discussed, and you've been using this for a long time, so again, guys, this is not in theory. This is in practice, everyday use. We see machines all around this building, really nice machines that need to have this type of process to monitor what's going on because with the success that the machine can create, operators can sometimes make mistakes and we're here to reduce that as much as possible. So with all of this being said, everything that you're able to accomplish, sometimes people go, yeah, but I'm scared of trying something new. How mm -hmm. easy is it to implement a process like this into an unknown situation? You know, it is. It is fantastic for unknown situations, and since we are just, since we are deep, deep in the learning of it, we have put a lot of thought into helping other people get there. And, you know, one of the things that we encourage, so any good machinist at their machine will watch, like, the, the horsepower bar, and they'll look to see something is going right or wrong by the, you know, jumping little, it's practically erratic, but at least you can tell when you're in cut and not in cut. Um, so what we have found for some shops is we'll say, just let them see the charting. Don't think about having it do anything automatically. Just let them watch it. And people will immediately, they'll start to optimize themselves. So instead of watching what's going on in the machine or listening, they will start to realize, wow, this is so much more clear than anything I could see any other way. And they will, uh, yeah, they will start to optimize it themselves. Then when you come online and you're like, now, you know, anytime you cross this red line for, uh, you know, you choose how long, but a, a fraction of a second, now we can run a macro and automate something. You know, stop the machine, uh, retract safely away. You know, I, there are just about everybody who's a machine owner or a shop supervisor or a machinist knows, like, if a machine stops and you are engaged in the material, you know, 
you've got, it should be better than 50-50 because you know what direction you're rolling the machine. But man, how many times do people tick the pulse wheel the wrong way and just drive things out of alignment? So, you know, a simple thing like that. The machine stops when it sees something wrong, a little Z retract, uh, brings up a message on the screen that says, you need to take a look at what's going on. Um, you know, go a little bit farther to how we run it. Uh, it sends a Slack notification that, you know, dings a couple key people that says the machine has just had this happen, along with some other key information about the alarm. It's, it's pretty cool. And uh, Nathan, you wouldn't believe how many times I've seen clockwise, counterclockwise on that spin wheel when the machine has stopped, and that 1,000th, and I'm a flute less on my carbide tool, right? Mm -hmm. It is that easy. Do you by chance remember that commercial of the hair? when they said, I'm not just a seller of the product. I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm also a member. What, yeah. Because you also have a great partnership with Karen now as well, which is mm -hmm. brand new that we're shouting to the world currently because yeah. you've been utilizing it for so long. You believe in the product. You've seen what it's been able to do for you. And you love helping others as well. Mm -hmm. So you've recently partnered with Karen to create that benefit as well, haven't you? Yes, we have. So this is, this is really exciting for us. We have been a... You know, we started just doing applications for Karen and we would do training. And then they convinced us to install them and be a full integrator. Uh, and that was great. So for years, we've been going to these integrator meetings um, and, you know, sharing our real life experiences and, oh, this is what just happened. Um, we've been testing out the products. But uh, this last integrator meeting, um, end of 2021, um, we sat down and we're like, you know, we could provide this to everybody. It's like we're running the products. We could bring our experience to all the integrators, all their customers, all the people who are interested in Karen, you know, around the country, around the world. And, you know, with the Karen engineering team's help, um, we have stood that up. So uh, it's great. I mean, we run all the products. We're knowledgeable in all the products. We help other people with them. Uh, that helping is a real passion, and we're, we're just really excited for what we're bringing to the market here. I think it's going to help everybody. Agreed. You're like a better version of Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nathan, thank you so much for sharing this story. This is really an incredible product, something I love to learn more about. Seeing the automation that's happening quickly, both in this country and close by with all the nearshoring and reshoring going on, Automation is so important, and software like this, devices like these, these are what are going to take us all to the next level. We're calling it 4.0, but it's more than that. There's so much more going on to what we're doing with the nearshoring and reshoring, and I want you guys to learn this type of stuff just like me in these great conversations we have with people like Nathan at Wolfram here in Austin, Texas. So thank you all for watching. I hope you've learned as much as I have, and Nathan, you are amazing. Thank you for sharing that story and taking care of others. Yeah, thank you, Tony.